Okay, so we're here at the beautiful Gardner Church and we've just given the speech on the marae. Uh, this is the second time I've been to this marae. First time a couple of years ago and I um, gave a talk on our book, Treaty of Waitangi, are we there yet? Today, 2016, political party, opportunities party is in existence and so I've come back to the marae to um, answer a challenge actually that they laid down to me which was in essence we need a Pākehā to do what Michael Joseph Savage couldn't do and that is get the Treaty of Waitangi and its principles encoded into legislation. So all I was saying to the assembled pan Māori groups was well we're having a go here and getting into Parliament and if we do get into Parliament and do have enough influence then we will do that what well, you um, challenge you laid down the treaty will be honoured and it will be central to our constitution and we'll make sure um, that you know Parliament's a sovereign of course but Parliament doesn't rush through legislation that is against the constitutional interests of Murray and as well as that I gave Murray a couple of my own challenges as is my want. The first one was well actually if you want us to be doing that for you you need to give us your party vote so we can get into Parliament and we can't do anything it's all academic unless we're in there and in there in sufficient numbers too by the way to have the establishment party government of the day do the biz. So you've got your Maori electorates of course but what are you doing with your party votes? I would suggest to you that they're a waste unless you give them to us and we can champion honouring the treaty. So that was the first challenge. The second challenge which is a little more controversial but nevertheless just as robust was really to ask Maori why do why does the New Zealand First Party get 20% of its support from Maoridom? 10% off the general role and 10% off the Maori role. It's incongruous to me because the New Zealand First doesn't actually believe in the treaty. In fact, they were very much part of in 2005 a private members bill to delete the articles of the treaty from legislation. And I never hear Winston talking in support of the treaty. He's always against it. He might as well be a Don Brash as far as I'm concerned. In fact, I went so far, I have to say, as to call him an Uncle Tom, which of course is an envoy for all the bad things um, that we you know, have in this country, which is discrimination on the base of, of race or ethnic group. And I basically posed the question to Murray, well, is the fact that because he's a Murray is beyond criticism no matter what he does. That's nuts. You guys need to deal to him because he doesn't have your interests at heart. And then he gave a reply, of course, gave a speech, and he didn't mention the treaty once and the whole thing. And that's by far the biggest challenge for Murray is to get their rights encoded into law and a lot of progress has been made but there's quite a lot to go and some a party like New Zealand First is leading the charge against that and I just don't think that that's acceptable for Maridom and they need to they need to step up and deal with it. So I had a couple of challenges of my own and I accepted their challenge and so ends another wonderful day at this site where T.W. Ratner and Michael Joseph Savage and 1936 agreed that all efforts would be made to embed the Treaty of Waitangi into the laws of this country. Cheers.